Hey everybody, this is uh, Tim Shepard with the Vintage Airstream Podcast. I know I've been promising my Starlink video. Um, I'm going to combine like the unboxing and my modifications. Um, so let's see if I can flip this camera around. I'm inside my 1960 uh, Airstream Ambassador. And it's pretty much a mess <laughs> right now. Um, but let's go ahead and flip the camera around. I'll show you kind of what's going on. Okay, here we go. This is the uh, box that the Starlink shipped in. Of course, I've emptied it now. Um, comes packed pretty well. Comes with a 70-foot cable. And that's the ground stand. So basically, the, the dish has a little mast on it that it stays on. And it snaps into that. There's a quick release for it. And um, then this cable has some custom molded ends one side that stays in the dish and the other side goes into the router so let me pop outside here and show you i got this mounted here see it up here so this is the original tv mast on my airstream from 1960 and this little thing right here that's just an adapter you can get from starlink it's a pole mast, a mast adapter, and it has those screws on it. And let me zoom in here. See those screws around there? It'll cinch down on the pole. Now it's probably not the best pole size to use for that, but you know, it's the one I had. That's not gonna stay on there when I'm towing or traveling at all. Just after I get somewhere, then I'll pop it up there. Okay, so that cable normally has a 60 foot cable or 70 foot goes from the dish and to the router now this little button right here uh, right there I don't know if you can see a little button it, um, that's the quick release for the dish okay so normally it goes from that molded connector into the router <coughs> which sitting right here so this is the router and this is that cable and let's see this is extra this is a, a adapter so you can get ethernet jack on it it's like 25 bucks extra but there's the molded end it's like very custom that normally goes straight from the dish into the router if you get this cat 5 jack for it so you could plug it into hardwired things um then this goes in line so i didn't modify that i did modify the original cable so let me show you how that works and why i did that so we'll hop back outside here you can see on the airstream this is a marine uh, rj45 jack um, again, this cable has custom molded ends, but in reality, it's just a Cat5 cable. It's a shielded Cat5 cable, but it's just a Cat5 cable. Um, so if you're handy with uh, splicing network RJ45 jacks, um, then you can, you know, at, at your own risk, cut the cable and put the ends on. The cables are sold separately, so it's not too bad of a risk, but um, it is some risk so what i wanted to do to do is leave this connected to the trailer and then pop the dish off and use it if i'm traveling other places or it needs a direct uh, northern sky if i'm parked in trees i want it to be able to remote it somewhere and use a little ground mount um, so that's why i did what i'm explaining here so um this is a weatherproof barrel and inside here is just a rj shielded rj45 coupler and i cut the cable to the length i want it so this is coming from the molded end of the dish cut the cable that's originally came with starlink and i put a shielded uh, rj45 connector on it so this one this top side it disconnects here let me show you i'll grab this 
Another piece here. I did get a couple of them. Okay, so this one, this is how that piece looks here. Okay, you just put the cable in and then it has a gasket on this piece. You can probably see here. And then that's just a Cat5 uh, RJ45 connector. And built into this, which screws down, is a, um, a, a jack, a female to female coupler. So this piece here stays permanently on and it loops down and it stays permanently in here. So this stays on. Now, when I take the uh, dish down, just by, you know, monkey standing up on top of that, like a monkey or something, and I disconnect it up there by pushing the button, and then it's not very heavy at all. And uh, I'll unscrew this and unplug it. And then this piece here, which looks like that, that'll stay on. And then I can hook up other network devices from outside to inside the trailer. That way, if I go back to the Wi-Fi Ranger or I'm testing something else, I haven't lost this ability to have it connected. This is the original mast um, from the trailer. It has the Starlink pipe adapter and then the Starlink itself. Okay. So here's what I did with the cable. I went ahead and put these ends on. Oh, I did that. Put the ends on and I can unscrew that and um, uh, use that in line. So even if it's outside, I could just unscrew the ends out there, put this in line. It's still gonna feed through the uh, trailer cabling to the router, and then I can extend the, um, the dish out somewhere so it's not in the trees being blocked or something. And then I just use the ground mount and just set the dish on the ground. Um, and then when I'm done, I can just coil it up and keep it aside. Or if I'm going to take the whole dash in the router somewhere else on a different vacation or in the car somewhere or somebody's house, or I can go ahead and do that and just use this setup to hook it all up. Okay, so the other side of the jack that's in the trailer, it comes in, it's a Cat5 and a Cat5e, and it comes around and it goes behind, it goes underneath uh, down that, behind all this cabinetry, past the tub and the vanity past the toilet and then up into the cabinet and it lands right here. So that's my internal cable and that's the jack that's plugged in. And then this is what I used on the molded cable to uh, tie all that stuff back together. So that's the whole concept. And this is the Starlink router. It has uh, 5G and 2.4 gig Wi-Fi or 5 gig Wi-Fi and 2.4, and uh, it goes pretty far. And I just have it plugged in. It is 110, so I'll just stripe the cord out here and, and plug it in. Um, I still have my the, uh, Wi-Fi Ranger router here. And what that's allowing is for stuff like this, this is the, um, it's 104 degrees in here. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi uh, easy, easy touch thermostat. I think that's what it is. And it, it uses Wi-Fi so I can control this remotely from my phone. So this Wi-Fi is using the Wi-Fi broadcast from the Wi-Fi Ranger. And then the Wi-Fi Ranger is connected to this. And then if we go camping or if I take this out and I don't have it, then this would connect to the campground Wi-Fi. So this setup would never have to change along with my um, Blink camera. I have a Blink camera in here, it's a Wi-Fi camera. It also connects to the Wi-Fi Ranger, which connects to the um, Starlink um, or Campground Wi-Fi or LTE or whatever. And I can remotely come look back and check in on the trailer. Like if we bring a dog for, gonna leave him for a little bit cause we're just off to the pool, we can check in on him. So you're going to want to download Starlink, and I'll go ahead and open it. Okay, I already have mine connected and set up. Um, I'm not connected to it uh, with my Wi-Fi. That's why we're seeing this. Oh, looks like it just connected. So when you first open this, it's going to ask you to answer some questions, like set up your Wi-Fi password and your Wi-Fi name. Um, 
And let me show you before we get into it what it does. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to stow it. So this is storing it. Like when I go to take it down, this is what I would do. I would store it. So it's going to make it um, not disconnect because it's not going to point to the sky. So let's go ahead and go out and look at that. Okay. So this is what it looks like when you first put it out of the box. It's right there. Okay. So and that's how you would do it. So if you wanted to fit it back in the box, you just hit that store stove button and then it moves it. So obviously it's not connected um, to the satellite. So it, it does it automatically. It turns it, it, it up and down, left and right, everything. So let me uh, start that and you can see um, how it goes. Okay. So sometimes it takes a while. So basically what it does is it goes like horizontal and it looks at the whole sky. And I think it's using GPS built into it and uh, then it starts scanning to see where the satellites are. Like I said, normally it's northern. Um, and there is a thing in the app that you can do, which I'll show you next, where you can see how your position rates um, to where, if it's a good spot to try. So you don't just have to blindly put it out and hope it works. You can use the app to guide you on places to go ahead and, uh, and set it up. And you can pretty much understand you're going to have some good results. Okay, so I had to go into settings and unstore it. And now it's looking around. I'll try and fast forward through some of this dead time. Usually it gets it, I don't know, it seems like it gets it in about five minutes, but it does do a lot of corrections over the next 12 or 24 hours or something. It keeps scanning your area, it gives you percentages of uh, outages that you'll probably notice um, because of obstructions. Like for me, my house here is uh, obstructing, and that's where I want us to see the northern sky. Okay, so it's starting to move. It wasn't very long, maybe a minute or two. And actually, when it was looking straight up, I went back in the app while I was waiting, and it said it was already online. So you can see there how it, it moves, turns and rotates complete circles and, and up and down. So. I think it's going to keep finessing itself. Okay, we're already online. Um, got my MacBook here. So go up to uh, Wi Fi, and basically it found like here's the uh, Spruce, which is the Wi Fi Ranger that's here. This is my home Wi Fi. And then these are the two different uh, Starlink uh, Wi Fi networks. This one is the 2.4. And this one's to five and i connected to five since i'm really close in here i can actually connect to the 2.4 all throughout my house even with my um iphone and and ipad and uh it, it works pretty well let me uh let me switch to doing a screen recording on the um on the mac here we go we're doing a screen capture on the mac um, like I said, uh, this is by going to the router via your web page. So I'm connecting, it's a web page, I'm connected to the uh, Wi-Fi, no, to the Starlink Wi-Fi. And then you go to 192.168.100.1. And like I said, this looks exactly like the app. Um, this is the visibility. Uh, oh, you can see here it's online and uh, let's go to visibility um, this is what you're going to get if you hook up the app, if you use the app you turn on visibility and follow the instructions and you wave the camera up in the sky all around you then it's going to look for these obstructions uh, this red happens to be my house right here um, here and um, uh, it'll tell you if it's a good spot. It'll just literally tell you, find another spot, or this is a pretty decent spot, or this is an excellent spot. And then you can just put it on the ground, on the stand, and you're good to go. Uh, this one it got after, you know, like probably overnight, just looking around uh, at signals. 
and then it came up with this little dome. Um, so this is itself in three-dimensional space. This is what it mounted on my trailer. And like I showed you on the outside video, uh, this is my house blocking the horizon. And um, this is it pointing north. You can see there. And that's exactly what it's doing now. So if this is all red or gaps in there, it's going to let you know that, yeah, you need to find a new spot. Now I'm just, this is where I park my trailer. So I'm not going to move my trailer, but um, it's interesting. So it says expect outages and eruptions at least every three minutes. Not that you're going to notice it. I mean, if you're watching a video buffering and all that, you, you really don't notice any of it. Um, and got stats. So this is your outages. So it has uptime. So I guess these little gaps here are when it lost connection. And like, again, it's so slow or so quick. The little gap is, you don't. most of the time you don't notice. Here's latency, probably good for video game players. Looks like it's averaging under 100 um, in usage. I don't, I just use it on my iPad and phone and for testing right now. Um, and then I do lots of speed tests. So let's go ahead and do a speed test here. So this is the built in speed test. And it's interesting because it does two tests from the one from the router to the internet. So this is the router and this is to the satellites, Starlink and the internet. So basically the, the dish is connecting to satellites up in space and the satellites connect to an earth ground station and that's the ground station is what supplies the internet to the uh, satellites so depending on uh, where you are where those ground stations are I'm assuming it picks the closest one so I'm getting uh, 53 down right now which is normal because it's in the middle of the day and I'll explain why that is and then it's gonna do um, oh, I guess that's all it's going to do. Oh, here, this one here. This dotted one is between your device. Oh, that's your upload. Oh, it's this, this is different from the app. So the app does, probably because it's not an app. So the app does the uh, router to the internet and then also does your device to the router um, because that could be limiting depending on the quality of your device and your and uh, how far away you are. Like when I'm in the house, this connection between the iPhone and the router going through my aluminum trailer could be less. Um, and I've, I've seen this as high as, and I'll show you some screenshots, I think 200, 300 um, in off-peak times. Let's see. I think that's about it. They have range tests and stuff, but that's to use with your app. Let's go to... Um, so I'm, I'm online through the Starlink right now. So let's go to um, speedtest.net. So we're going to do a regular speed test. It's probably how most people check their speed since they don't have it built into their app. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll show you some speed tests that went way faster. I'm just doing this at... Um, Four in the afternoon which is a, a peak time so basically how it works is uh, the RV plan there's there's like three different plans one is for your home uh, and you just have a stated address service and so that one is guaranteed the highest speed capable that they can do I'm like this is horrible see the ping and the 5.95 um, because those people just use it as a fixed location then they have one um, Portability, I think you pay an extra 25 bucks to have portability. I think it's 110 bucks for a home, and then you can add portability function where you could take it with you if you went somewhere, and um, and use it. And I think those people get less priority. Let me do another speed test while I'm talking. And and then the RV people is 135 a month, and you get the the lowest priority probably. Um, during peak times uh, so you're competing against uh, people who have fixed addresses because you have the you have the portability roaming feature all the time see that was better 108 um, I've seen as much as 10 or 15 up and 
two down. I, don't, I can't remember if I saw 300 down or not. Um, and again, if you're in the middle of nowhere, no cell service or anything like that, then uh, then this is this is what they say better than nothing. Uh, okay, so let's go to blog.devap.com. Probably have a video there. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'll just start playing this. And you can see how much it buffers and all that. This is Tim with the Vintage Airstream Podcast. Today I'm gonna try and fix my fantastic vent fan. Um, it's been going kind of intermittent lately and so you can see it's not really buffering now let me skip ahead leave because the that's pin when switch you might have trouble see it's just picking right up okay buffering there a little bit I mean but really I mean it's just amazing this is going up to the satellites and back um, it's really cool so let's go to maybe go to Starling website. Okay. So you can order Starlink. Uh, so here's the RV plan. This is the one we're interested in. It's five ninety nine, and then it's one hundred and thirty five a month. So the five ninety nine is one time for the for the dish. Here's the normal stand, and um, I understand there's no waiting, or at least when I got it, I got it and got it within a week. Because originally people um, ordering Starlink had to wait months or a year or whatever, um, but they were getting it for their house. So um, uh, then it's one thirty five a month. So the difference between Starlink for RVs and the other plans is that you can pause the service. So you can log into your um, Starlink on the on the web page and you can pause the service. So you only turn it on when you're gonna be traveling or camping and then it charges you the 135 bucks for the month. And then you can turn it off and you can wait till the next season or if it's all you're gonna use, you could just keep it on all the time. Um, so that's the benefit of the Starlink for RVs. The other plans, you, can, you have to like, officially cancel and then you run the risk of being able to turn it back on because they only limit the amount of users in geographical areas while they're deploying the satellites so they're still deploying satellites so the the um, secondary use speeds uh, for RV users that's gonna go down I mean that's gonna go that's gonna lessen as they get more um, satellites in space over time so I think that's about everything you need to know. Oh, okay, before we do, let me show you locals. Let's see, the vap dot locals dot com. And this is where you should go. So we moved all of our uh, episodes over to uh, locals and it's free to become a member and um, once you're there, you can have access to archives shows. I'm still lo uploading them there, um, but here they are. So like this, I got up to 270 on there now, but I'm still adding them. And you can play them right from the web browser. For Friday, February 3rd, 2017. Okay. And you can search. There's a search thing up here. I don't know. Tank. These are shows that we talked about tanks. Um, let's see. I should be. This is my admin side. I guess this is how a member would see it. Um, episodes on here that are open to everybody. And um, you can go through and, pr and browse those and check them out. And if you. There's also some that are locked. So if you become a contributor, and I have it, the lowest I can set it for, they let me, is five bucks a month. And then that'll unlock all the shows. So 270 shows right now. 
it'll unlock all of them. Um, and uh, uh, you can just go here and listen to one you want. Plus, there's an app. That's what I really like. Uh, you can go to the app and play it from your phone, and you can actually turn your phone screen off and keep listening. Um, so I have some videos on here now. I can do live streams from here. That's another thing I've been working on trying to do. I did a couple. And um, and then I'm all the content here. So if you go to podcasts, um, you can see all the different uh, shows are on here. And like I said, you could search them. You could click on them. For Friday, August 5th. To start playing. You could view the show notes when it came out. All that fun stuff. There's also um, uh, playlists, and here you go, playlists. So I just started building this one. So like here, meet episode. This is where we interviewed and talked to uh, other people. <laughs> so this one, we talked with Randy from Best Converter. Um, this one we talked with. Uh, the gentleman who did the uh, illumination documentary. Um, we talked with the solar people on that one. So you could just go to this playlist and just play them. There's tons of them in this playlist. And here are the, all the ones where we talk to people. Um, what other playlist? We got rallies, so all the rally reports, the traders by the decades, and just all of them. All the shows are now. And I'm going to be adding more. I just uh, just getting started. So, and then I can also post just articles and things. Like here's a little video about how to use the app. Um, you know, I talk about how to use the app on your phone, which makes it really cool. Or I'll do live streams and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, come over and check it out. You can join for free and just get all the free content that, like this one here. There's no uh, no lock on it, so you can just come here and listen to that one. If you see one that has a lock, then you'd have to. It would it would prompt you to. Uh, and you could just do it for a month if you want and then have all of them um, during that month. So anyway, um, yeah, check it out. Woo, it's like 100 degrees in a trailer. Uh, I'm trying to film this for you guys. Um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions about Starlink, uh, let me know. Um, or my modification that I did. I think that's going to come in handy uh, for when I, when I have it on the trailer. You know, hopefully it's a little bit safer being up on a trailer than just sitting on the ground. I don't know how people are going to secure them if they leave for the day. It'd be a real pain to have to take it down all the time. Um, I don't know. If, if something happens with that, I'll let you know what I figure out to lock it. And, and then if I travel, I, I can just take the router and the cable with me and hit the road. So I, I like the way that turned out. So far, so good. And you might think 135 bucks is a lot, and it is, especially if you're just going out for, you know, four days like we usually do. But when using the Wi-Fi Ranger, uh, let me show you that. Um, well, let me just do it kind of janky here. I don't want to turn the camera around. Okay, here's the Wi-Fi Ranger that I had. Uh... And um, the Wi-Fi Ranger had an LTE component, which was really cool. This is the Everest one. You know, because let's face it, Wi-Fi at parks is very unreliable. And so having the um, LTE built in was great. This one's, I think, 3, 4G. Uh, it uses AT&T. It's a pay-as-you-go, um, WinGuard pay-as-you-go. But it was, it was like 60 bucks for 3 gigs or a week until it expired. And that's not a lot. And it's, um, you know, it's still kind of slow, right? I mean, it's probably fast enough for just doing videos and stuff. But, you know, I like to post what we're doing, maybe make videos, watch videos, of course, listen to music and all that while we're camping. You know, you know, I'm a techie guy, so I like that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, 135 bucks just turn it on for a, a camping trip or two is is, is a little bit of money but um, I think in the end to be able to go anywhere and have it work uh, is cool so th the one got you though and I've been tweeting Elon because he needs to fix it is if you have the service paused before you go out 
and you get somewhere where there's no service at all, you won't be able to turn it on. You're gonna have to go drive somewhere with your phone, find some kind of LTE or Wi-Fi, log into your Starlink account online and unpause the service, you know, and then go back to your Starlink if you're in the middle of nowhere and it'll work. It takes 30 minutes to start working again. I think all you see is a network error. You don't even get to see that it's paused. What they should do is put a, a pay portal on. Like if it's paused, you could still connect to something and then click the button to pay. Um, that would be great. Hopefully they'll do that because you don't always know. We went camping in Yosemite, the place advertised uh, Wi-Fi. Cell phones didn't work. And for two days, their Wi-Fi was down, which, you know, eh, I know camping and you're going camping to get away from it all. But I like, oops, I like to, um, I like to be connected. So if you're going to have a pause, unpause it before you head out. And I'm going to go back online and pause my service again. I only unpaused it to show you guys. Okay, I think that'll do it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave some comments below or reach out to me, tim at the vat .com. And until next time, we'll see you down the road.